Greetings. I'm Janie Mawinney, teacher of belly dance at the Villages Florida Lifelong Learning College and director of the Village Gypsies, a tribal fusion belly dance troupe. If you use a coin scarf for belly dance or Zumba, you've probably had it fall down around your ankles like the rest of us. So I'm going to show you one method to keep your coin scarf up. And this method is really for the larger and heavier coin scarves. Later, I'll do one for the lighter weight ones. So this is one that I did recently. And possibly you can see in here that there's a casing and inside the casing is elastic and there's a snap at the end of the elastic. That's the only place that the elastic is tied to the scarf because it has to be able to move. At the other end we have casing to cover the elastic, a tail so you don't lose the elastic, and another snap. And that's all there is to it. You take the two ends of the snaps, snap them together, adjust the end of the casing so it covers the elastic, and you see it's held on just by the elastic. Then you tie the ties in a decorative manner. It covers the casing pretty much and you're done. So I'm going to show you how to do this. We will do it with <coughs> this because it's light colored. And you will need blanket binding and I chose to use this pretty multicolored one just so you can see it. You can buy this at a fabric store or online and it's satin blanket binding and we'll talk more later. You'll need one inch or maybe one and a half inch elastic, depending on how heavy your hip scarf is. Don't cut it yet. And you'll need snaps. I prefer the large snaps. You can get by with smaller, possibly. And a needle and thread, a sewing machine if you have it, a friend with a sewing machine if you have it. You can do this by hand. Um, the first time you do it with a machine, it's going to take you about four hours. After that, it'll take you about two hours. And all of mine are done this way, so give it a try.
So let's get started. First, take your belt, coin scarf, and put it on. Try and make sure it's centered. You need to know where your casing will start. And that's going to be right about at your hip bones, a little bit in. So take a pin, find your hip bone on either side of your belly, and come in about an inch on that scarf. And mark that spot. On the other side, and mark that spot. So on the inside where your pin is, is where you will sew your casing. In step one, we put a pin in the coin scarf where our front hip bones are plus about an inch. So you notice it's about an inch outside the embroidery here. We need to move the pin to the inside because we'll be sewing on the inside. So I take the pin off move it to the inside, same location. This is pretty approximate, so don't worry about it a whole lot. It's now on the inside, and we'll do the same to the other end. And those pins are the end points for where we're going to sew the casing for the elastic. In step two, we are going to attach the elastic to the blanket binding, and from now on, we will call this the casing, because it's going to be encasing the elastic. First, you should have a single fold in your blanket binding. We're going to use the, the blanket binding fold it over and we're going to take the end of the elastic, turn the binding over by about half an inch, center the elastic in the middle of one of the halves and fold it over and you want to keep that elastic in the center. So now you can pin it if you want. I'm just going to sew it down. Now that you have finished sewing your elastic into the casing, leave it loose and we're going to sew the first snap down. Position the casing with the fold on the right and the open side on the left. 
This will make it easier to get it through your sewing machine. Take half of your snap, and the snaps are not interchangeable. This is the female. It's an innie, and there are two little bars inside which hold the male part. So if you're sewing the female, make sure you sew it as an any, which I'm going to do right here. Again, the snaps are not interchangeable, so be sure and test them before your final sew down. In step three, we are going to sew the casing on the inside of the coin scarf. First, we have to look for gotchas. A gotcha is a coin or a bead that's along the line that we're going to be sewing. We're looking at the outside of the scarf because that's where the gotchas are. So to see if it's a problem, Lay your casing out, and this is where we'll be sewing it on the inside. So there's a line of beads along the top, which won't be a problem because we'll be sewing along that edge. On the bottom of the casing, there's nothing. It's clear. So this particular project doesn't have any gotchas. So let's now go to the inside of the coin scarf. For step three, we're going to pin the casing to the upper edge of the coin scarf starting at the safety pin. And this is going to be the line of stitching for the top edge of the casing. Now leave the elastic loose. Don't be tempted to cut the elastic and don't cut the excess of the casing yet. Depending on how good a seamstress you are, you may choose not to pin the whole way. Next we remove the hip bone pin. We don't need it any longer. And we're going to start sewing from the end of the casing. Taking the pins out as you go, of course. You notice I'm keeping the elastic away from the needle right now. We're nearing the end of step three. We've come to the second hip bone pin that indicates the end of stitching of the casing. Do not cut the casing. We are going to finish sewing up to the pin and then back stitch a few steps to lock the thread.
So that's the end of stitching the top row of the casing. Now I'm going to remove the other hip bone pin and we'll move on. For step four, you really need to pin it the whole way. We're going to pin the bottom row of stitching with the elastic inside the casing. You want to make sure that the elastic is pushed up against the top of the previous line of stitching so that you don't catch it with your needle. If you sew into the elastic, it won't be able to stretch for you. So pushing the elastic in, pin that bottom edge of the casing. The casing now is entirely pinned along the bottom stitching line and you'll notice you don't see the elastic anymore because it is inside the casing. Before we sew it down we need to check and see what the front looks like. So turn it over and check where you pinned and make sure that the fabric is lying smoothly and not pulling in any direction or have any big lumps and bumps. There will be some, but make it look reasonable and now we're going to sew it down. Starting again from the fixed end, which is where your snap is. And being careful that the coins don't get caught up either in your stitching or on your sewing machine. The bottom row of stitching is complete. We'll turn it over and even though you can see the casing through here, the blue bobbin thread is all you see on the stitching lines. So if this were not a demonstration, I would have used a blue blanket binding for the casing.
forget about the extra seam binding for now. We're going to finish with that in the next step. For now, we're concerned with the elastic. So tighten the elastic as much as you need. By now you should have this on you. And mark the spot on the loose end of the elastic where you need to sew the snap. So that's where the other half of the snap is going to go. Make it comfortably tight, not too tight to weaken the elastic, but not so loose that your scarf is going to fall down when you shimmy. Now we have a little tricky part. We need to sew the other snap onto the elastic, but first you need to make sure that you have it right. This was the female part. This is going to be on the inside of your hip scarf. So making sure that the elastic is flat in here so you don't have any twists I need to put the male part on this side of the elastic. So I'm going to move my pin so it's all on the top side. So this will go right on top of the male part of the snap and there's going to be some elastic showing and we're going to cover that in just a minute. The male part of the snap is now sewn on. We're going to test it with the female half. It snaps nice and tight. And that's what's going to hold your hip belt on. Now, We can cut off the remains of the elastic, but leave about four inches. And remove the excess elastic. Now that we have the snaps placed on the elastic, put the coin scarf around your hips and snap the ends of the elastic together. Be careful not to let go of the loose end yet because we don't have a tail on it and it might disappear into the casing. So this is what it should look like. Some of the elastic should be showing. You've got your blanket binding that's showing outside of your coin scarf because it attaches underneath. And what we're going to do now is extend the casing enough so that while you're dancing, it will not pull back and show the elastic. So from the location of the snap, which is right about here, extend your casing about another four inches and mark that spot on the casing because that's where you're going to finally cut it. You should have marked on your casing where you're going to cut it 
and again it should extend three or four inches past where your snap is. Don't throw away your casing. Now we're going to just do a double fold on the inside and stitch along there. This area gets a lot of wear and tear from your elastic, so you don't want it fraying threads. So you finished your rough edge. Now you notice how the elastic is shorter than the casing. You don't want your elastic slipping into the casing or you'll have a hard time retrieving it. So what we're going to do is put a tail on the end of the elastic. So take your leftover blanket binding and cut a piece eight or nine inches. And you don't really have to do this. It's really for your own um, satisfaction. But we're going to finish the rough edge. And the other raw edge. Now, this doesn't need to be as wide as the casing. It just needs to hold the tail of your elastic. So, I'm just going to fold this in. And fold this in. And what's necessary is that you catch the elastic in here. If you wanted to be neat, we would have pinned this. So we now have a very messy but functional tail. Now that we will not lose the elastic into the casing, we can finish the bottom edge of our casing. First we'll pin it. And again, you need to be sure that you don't stitch into the elastic or the tail.
and your project is finished. Here's the inside, here's the tail, the elastic will pull out and it will attach to the fixed end If this were the same color as your belt, it wouldn't be so spectacular. And all you need to do is tie your ties and you're good to go. This tail will actually tuck under the coin belt or you can tuck it under your skirt. Our hip scarf is finished. The elastic is snapped together. I left the tail on the elastic out, but now we'll take it and we'll tuck it in. So it will not show. You can see how the end of the casing is pleated. Now, it looks like there's a little too much here. I would suggest that you dance with it a few times first and see how much it pulls apart as the elastic works while you're dancing. You may want to reduce the size of that casing. Think twice, cut once. All that's left now is to tie the ends of the scarf, put a bow on there if you like, and you can still see some of the casing. Sometimes I take one of the tails of the scarf
and tuck it over the casing and then let it hang down so it can be seen. And we finished this project and thank you for your kind attention. Enjoy.